Well, good morning. Welcome to St Peter's Church at home in this morning's service of morning worship. I'll be using the Iona style order of worship, which starts on page 20 of the blue service sheet. So let's begin with a moment of quiet to listen out for God's voice speaking to us through the words of the service. And let us hold each other in our hearts and the rest of our church family, particularly those who will be watching the service later. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and prayer with glad and sincere hearts, praising God. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Be still and listen to the day. Touch the breeze with the quiet of your soul. Let the turbulence of the hurly-burly rushing pass you by. Let God bless you with a quiet whisper, which in all the day's doing keeps a calm, silent centre in your being. Let us open our lives to God and ask his forgiveness and grace. On the poverty of our seeing and the poverty of our believing. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> on the poverty of our giving and on the poverty of our following. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On the poverty of our loving and the poverty of our living. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. On all who turn to him, Christ says, your sins are forgiven. He also says, follow me. Amen. Thanks be to God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now let us say together the appointed psalm, which is Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is co closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. To praise the name of the Lord according to the statutes given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now Veronica will bring us the first reading. The reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch, and were teaching the believers. Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some of the believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they travelled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. And when they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders 
to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us, for God's word and wisdom in us, thanks be to God. Thank you, Veronica. Now let's say together the canticle which is on the screen in front of you. God of the ordinary, we praise you. You take the drabness of our thoughts and brighten them into vivid imagination. You take our everyday lives and transform them into holy, precious moments. You take our meager offerings and multiply them into an abundance of delight. Extraordinary God, you light up our thoughts, our lives, ourselves with the wonder of your call. With everything we are and have, we praise you. Amen. And now BJ will bring us the gospel reading. Reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are <clears throat> Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. For the word of God in Jesus, for God's wisdom all around us, for God's word and wisdom in us. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, BJ. Now Rachel is going to share her reflection with us. Pressed on mute and it didn't unmute me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts always abide with you, our Lord, the true vine. Amen. Remain in me as I also remain in you. This is a wonderful phrase, isn't it? Some versions of the Bible, of course, use the words abide or dwell. Abide and dwell conjure up the reassuring image of being at home, of inhabiting, and remain speaks of a constancy that persists, endures and lingers, that continues. Definitely all words that fit nicely with our Father God. I rather like the word abiding, so for the rest of this reflection, that's the word I'm going to use. But what does it mean for us to abide in Jesus as branches in the vine? I believe that there are three things that are implied. Connection, dependence and continuance. Not three successive steps, but interwoven aspects of abiding. Abiding in Jesus, first of all, 
means having a life-giving connection to him. A branch is connected to the vine and a vine to the branch. This is what we might call union with Christ. The connection is mutual. We abide in him and he abides in us. If there is no connection, there is no life, no fruit. Abiding though also implies dependence. This is probably a slightly more challenging aspect to abiding because unlike connection, this facet of abiding is not reciprocal. The branch is wholly dependent on the vine, but the vine is not dependent on the branch. The branch derives its life and power from the vine. In today's society, we tend to see the world from a very narrow viewpoint, that is, our own. The bookshops or Amazon shelves are full of self-help books. We are encouraged to find ourselves, have me time and so on. Not in themselves bad things. We all need to cultivate a good balance. And even Jesus drew aside in order to feed himself. But the dependence we have on the vine, on Jesus, is different. This I am phrase recognises that, apart from the vine, the branch is useless, lifeless and powerless. Sap flows from the vine to the branch, supplying it with water, minerals and nutrients that make it grow. As believers, we receive the sap of Christ's grace through our life-giving connection to him. We are completely dependent upon Jesus for everything that counts as spiritual fruit. Galatians 5 tells us what they are. Apart from him, the gospel reading tells us we can do nothing. And finally, abiding also involves continuance. The Greek word for abide is meno, which means to remain or stay or continue. So we need to carry on abiding in Jesus, remaining or dwelling in him. This means simply that we go on trusting, that we keep on depending, that we never stop believing. To abide in Jesus is to persevere in Jesus and his teaching. This means putting Jesus at the centre of our lives, focusing on him and his teaching. We have a wisteria in the garden. It's obviously a very old plant and it trails around two walls of the sitting room and two walls of the snug. It is a mass of purple flowers on the sunnier aspects of our home at the moment. The shadier bits are still a tad behind. But it needs cutting back each year after it has flowered to bring the tend tendrils in towards the source of their strength. Left to their own devices, the branches keep on reaching out. But the further away from the trunk they get, the weaker and flimsier they become. When we move too far from the source of our strength, we become weaker too. We need to keep close to the source of our spiritual food in order to put on good, productive growth. I don't think that abiding in Jesus is an optional extra. The way Jesus describes it, it seems to be an all or nothing deal. But it is something we have to work on, something we have to choose to do. Sometimes, through life's ups and downs, we can feel far from Christ, but belief in and faith in Jesus means we do abide in him. We are connected to the life-giving vine. Sometimes, though, we have to take a good look at the way we are growing and recognise that it is time for a bit of a prune, time to refocus and become more Christ-centred again. Turn from what we are doing that isn't fruitful, let go and encourage new growth, better spiritual fruit by cutting back. The wonderful thing is, it's never too late to do that. A hard prune of a very straggly plant can look a bit messy, but it is rarely beyond redemption if the roots are deep and the main trunk is solid. Abiding in Jesus doesn't require a degree or jumping through lots of hoops. It doesn't demand a crisis decision or a mystical experience. It just means keeping the words of Jesus in our hearts and minds, 
so that they are renewing and reviving us, shaping and sanctifying us, filling and forming us. And it means keeping ourselves in his infinite, enduring, sin-bearing, heart-conquering, life-giving love. Abide in him. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. Let, let us take a minute to reflect on those words. Think about abiding with Jesus. Picture that vine or picture that wisteria. And so let us say together the creed which would appear on the screen in front of you. We believe in God, the maker and shaper of our pathways, who sent Jesus to show us the narrow way and who is the beginning and ending of our traveling. We believe in Jesus Christ, the sharer of our flesh, who entered and experienced the human journey and who walks beside us on the road. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the midwife, a nurturer of our potential, who drove Jesus into the desert and who calls us now to cast off from the shore. We believe in Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a shaper, sharer and stirrer of our journeys and we recommit ourselves to following their way. Amen. And now let us say the collect together. Almighty God, who through your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires. So by your continual help, we may bring to good effect through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And BJ is going to lead us in the intercession. Thank you. Let us pray. We pray to the Lord God Almighty in whom we abide, in whom we move, and in whom we have our being. Heavenly Father, we all want to produce good fruit in abundance. Nurture us as branches of the true vine. Train and prune us where necessary. And make our spiritual harvest rich rich so that we may grow your kingdom and tell others of you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, clearly we see around our world the tragic and expensive consequences of branches cut off from the tree vine. We pray for a seeking after your truth and a desire to act rightly and justly, justly in all areas of human society. We pray at this time for India, for all those who are struggling with the virus, for the doctors and nurses who are caring for them under difficult circumstances and for the government. We pray too for Brazil and other areas where the virus is rampant. We give you thanks for our own country and our NHS and praise you that we have this wonderful and helpful organisation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for those to whom we're linked, my family, friendship or work. Especially we pray for those separated from their loved ones or their home. We pray for all those who are in nursing homes and residential homes who haven't seen families for ages and ask that as they have their visits, they may rekindle love and friendships again. Pray for all who are lonely, that you will bring alongside them today someone who cares. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we long for healing and wholeness in all who suffer and in all dysfunctional communities. Guide us to understand how we might be part of that healing. In the quiet of our hearts, we hold before God all those we have on our prayer lists in our churches and all those we know personally who, needs God, God, who need God's help and healing. Heavenly Father, we hold before you today those countless millions of people who suffer and are not seen. Bring them your help and healing and your presence today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that death cannot separate us from your love. In that knowledge, we commend to your keeping those who have died and all who miss them. We remember Doreen and Margaret. In the quiet of our hearts, we bring before God all those we know and love but see no longer. We give you thanks, Lord, that we know that they dwell with you in safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that we can live in the joyful freedom of your love. And we dedicate ourselves to serving others today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, BJ. Now let us sing the peace, the blessing to one another. God. 
he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you. Send us out. Send us out to seek wisdom. Send us out in peace. Send us out. Send us out to do justice. Send us out in hope. Send us out. Send us out to be loving. Send us out in joy. Go now with God's blessing. Go in justice and love. Go and love your neighbour. Go and respect the earth. Go and befriend strangers. Go and make peace. And now Norma will bring us the blessing. The spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and keep you all safe this day and forever. Amen. Thank you, Norma, and thank you everybody who's taken part in the service this morning and attended the service this morning, and to those who are going to be watching later, and to the whole church family, we send our love and our blessing. And have a good week, everybody, and hope to see you next week, or Sunday, back to see the church. Now go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.